So this is the first dish. This is the opening dish on the menu. So Simmer's going to break it down and kind of show you exactly how we do it. So we start the meal with our fluke course. It's five preparations of fluke. For us, I wanted to start the meal on a real high note. And the amount of work that goes into it is really intense, but I think, I think it's worth it. Are these the nicest shoes you've seen someone put your vision? We all wear really, really nice kicks in the Just building. say yes, please. Just to be... Uh... Right? The chef told me to wear something really good, so I'm like, okay, I'll just... <laughs> but he normally rocks heat, so this is extra heat. So this is like not a traditional way to break down a fluke. It looks like a little tomahawk chop. So basically the goal here is to keep those bones intact. Yeah, this is like one of the ways uh, we used to debone like rabbits and stuff, and we just learned from there. And we just got like just enough meat hanging on over here so we can make a chop out of it and then we clean up the bones. So now we're gonna take this piece to uh, run on the bandsaw. I'm gonna take this chopped or the center cut upstairs and, and clean it and Max will take care of the rest of the fluke. This is the citrus cure. So we're not like packing it in the cure really, we're just like lightly seasoning it a little bit on both sides so it doesn't get over salted because it sits for 24 hours. This is the kombu cured fluke. Uh, so we take the kombu and the fluke filet. We lay it in there in the kombu dry because as it sits overnight, it's gonna draw the moisture out of the fish and make it easier to pound and roll. The team is gonna cure fish for tomorrow morning. So when they walk in, they have the kombu cure, they have the citrus cure. This is the kombu cure. So like you can see like some of the moisture like seeped into the, the seaweed, it's actually wet. It's gonna be really easy to pound, really easy to work with. This is the last thing we do downstairs, so now everything's gonna be brought up. So this is the, uh, the saga walk-in, and everything starts down here. Okay, so there's really only one way to get things upstairs. We just need to be really smart and efficient about how we travel through this building, or else we just lose all our time. We're rolling all this stuff upstairs to the 63rd floor uh, to start getting saga going. Yo, this is the first elevator on the ride to the top. So this elevator can only be called from the front desk. You can't call it from the cellar. <laughs> so if you, the door closes, the door is closed. You're screwed. You have to start over again. There's no cell service down here, so you can't even call the front desk. You have to find like interesting ways to get your information up there. Maybe there's a handyman with a walkie-talkie. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, walkie-talk the front desk. It's yeah, just a yeah. nightmare. This is our dedicated uh, elevator. And this is really like one of the, the central challenges of this restaurant. All right, second elevator on our trip up top. Every bite of food, every guest comes in and out of this elevator. Food goes up, it comes down either in a garbage or someone's stomach. We're just gonna clean up and make the chops now. From here to here it works as like, you see all the bones are like nice and big and we can get the chops out of here. So like, we're gonna take the spot off. So what we do is just take it off right now. So now you see like it start, start to look like more of like a traditional rack of lamb or like a, like the bones gonna be like a chop now. I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and start portioning it. So it's like one bone is, is a portion, a perfect loin on it, and there's the bone which we need to clean. This is like the most tedious thing and also like very delicate because like I could rush this and I can break all the bones and we have nothing left for service tonight. So it's a lot of technique and a lot of patience here. So like basically when we first conceptualized the dish, we started with, with the chop and then basically built the dish around the other elements. So this is the kombu flute. We uh, pound it out into thin pieces so that we can roll it up. Okay, so here we have batons of cucumber, compressed in mint. These are uh, pickled and marinated golden beets. This is Granny Smith apple. So basically we put these pieces here, make a little pyramid essentially and then wrap them. Yo, that was a race? <laughs> what the f It's always a race. So Nick is responsible for essentially all things on the flute. So this project takes a long time, but like it's just such a small piece and such a big overall picture that once it finally hits the plate and you see it, you're just like really proud. And you hear someone say like, wow, that's one of the best bites I've ever had. Like that's the moment where you're like, all right, rolling fluke for two hours is a little bit worth it. So this is the compressed cucumber ball for the fluke. We are basically using this Parisian peeler, which is a melon baller, and scooping out the center of the cucumber, and then taking this ball and scooping out the center of that. We take this cucumber ball, 
and we compress it in mint oil and then stuff it with marinated oops, and then cap it with the cucumber gelée. It takes some time to pick up, but once you got it, you got it. When this hits the table, I just want people to understand the like playfulness of this restaurant. It's not a traditional start to the meal. This is Julius. Uh, Julius is working on, tom uh, on tomago, which is this delicious cake sort of pudding, which goes on the bottom of the caviar. It's a recipe you have to like be very careful with. It looks really easy, but it's honestly, we have messed this dish up more than anything. It's definitely one of those dishes that's like easy to learn, but really difficult to master, you know? Yeah, so. it's like making souffle, to be honest. Have you ever got, like, we made a double batch and it's like one, one sheet tray is good and one's bad? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there have been, there been a few days like that, yeah. All right, so now uh, we're going to wrap the tamago real nice and tight, and then we're going to take this into our rationale oven, and we're going to go steam this. It kind of gives you these same kind of feeling and elements and emotions as a traditional cavalry course, but there are some twists to it. You know, there's vinegar, fried potato chips. We throw that on to add some texture. You know, we're trying to, you know, think about it differently. It's 12 o'clock right now in the main kitchen. It's mellow, it's chill, we're just starting to get things going. And this is how we start today up here at Saga. We are setting up the mushroom veil, the mushroom and truffle veil for our custard course. Yo, Calvin is our hotline sous chef, and he's gonna, like, we're gonna build this. We need to do this every day. It's like tedious work, but I think something that's really pretty and, and uh, adds a lot to this dish. Yeah, it's beautiful. I mean, it's definitely a very labor intensive project. Like, the effort is worth it. The juice is worth the squeeze. The juice is worth the squeeze, which is, this is a term we use around here. We do a lot of things that are really tough, but we think that the final product is worth this effort. This takes probably like an hour of your day. Like, how, what does this really take start to finish you? An hour, hour and a half. The mushroom guy. I'm a real fun guy, you know? <laughs> Please don't edit that out. No, that's going in. I've been waiting my whole life to say that. This is one of the two that I do every day. But again, I've never been happier in my life. <laughs> this project has filled me with so much joy and purpose. And I truly didn't know what life was about until I met. <laughs> <laughs> we started just with black truffles. We're like, oh, let's just shave black truffles and put it on top. I'm like, the contrast wasn't there. There wasn't this negative space. It just wasn't enough. I'm like, we need to add a, add a little bit more to it. Everything needs to make sense. You know, and there's a lot of stuff in fine dining restaurants where it's just tradition and they do it a certain way. And for me, I want to kind of break, break some of these things. But I think this is really pretty and I think it's worth it. At certain points, you have to show technique. And there's other moments like, wow, this is just really delicious. And I think it's, it's that balance. With this restaurant, the goal was, what are the things with fine dining that we wanted to really like embrace? What are the things that we wanted to change? And I think this is clearly a, a, a fine dining moment in the traditional sense. I think these restaurants need to be more fun. I think that's what we're trying to do here. People need restaurants like this. They need to have moments where they like forget about things, sit down at a table and just focus on delicious food and, and be taken care of. And we're clearly trying to do that. Like, look how beautiful this is. Like, this is when you see all the hard work, all the, all the like, torture that this guy goes through to, like, make this really nice. I think it's all worth it. Yeah. This one is not that nice. That's clearly, it. unacceptable, that was not good. Yeah, get out of here. That's not a good one? Beat it, nerd. So this is Crown Chai. This was our first restaurant that we opened in this building. And this allows us to work upstairs. Like without this restaurant and kitchen, we wouldn't be able to do upstairs. So we're gonna start by breaking down these ribs. And it's a huge project and it takes days for us to do. So it's something that we always need to be in front of. This is one of the crown shot dishes we're never gonna change. And it's something that we love and we, and we worked on for like a year before we opened the restaurant. So it's like, okay, how do we find things that we love that can, that can tie into upstairs? If you had this upstairs, you wouldn't necessarily know it's the downstairs rib because we treat it differently. Here, we kind of serve it more like a piece of medium roasted piece of rib. Upstairs, it's, it's a secondary cut from our entree. Yeah, for me, I think it's like great for both restaurants just to share products. It makes our day a little bit smoother. We're gonna cook it really hard. We're gonna really char it. It doesn't cook the protein because it's cold. It's really straight out of the fridge. So it can take 
some extra heat without really overcooking the protein. So from here, these will get bagged. They get dropped in the bath for, for 48 hours. So these guys have just came out of the bath. From here, they will get portioned up for service down here, and then some of them will get portioned to go upstairs. It looks like it's hammered. It looks like it's overcooked. You cut it open, you have this beautiful croissant. Look at this. This beautiful piece of like pink rosé, medium piece of meat. So this right here is what you're gonna get when you eat a crown chai. And then this piece right here is gonna get cooked in a glaze and go on the rib set upstairs. Down here, we use this as a service piece. We take this bone, we boil it, we clean all the trim off of it. The rib gets portioned and gets served on it like a piece of steak. Entrees, for me, they are let down in, in, in restaurants in, in, of all different stripes. And I'm like, here, I want to finish on a strong note on the savory side. So this is the centerpiece for upstairs. This is the decal. This is the ribeye cap. It goes around the eye of the ribeye. It's traditionally like super, super marble, really delicious. These are one of those things you don't need to do much to make it really great. We just, you know, like literally like take the silver skin off and serve it. My name is Jamal James Kent. The first time I ever used James, I put J. James Kent on my resume. It was the summer after 9-11. New York was this crazy place. And I just wanted to get a job. And I thought that, that, that it would like, I would have issues. I was raised in an Islamic home. My father was born here in, in, in New York. And my grandfather, when they were infants, took him and his younger siblings to North Africa. And my father grew up in Tangiers. He speaks Arabic, he's Muslim. So I've like hidden behind my, my first name my whole life, sadly. I have the ability to tell authentic stories that are my own. I don't need to hide behind things anymore. And I'm trying not to. And that means cooking food that's important to me. So what I wanted to do for, for the last course is to really represent my father's culture. And we're doing a tagine with semen bread, which is a traditional Moroccan flatbread. The short rib that we glazed. I feel like when that hits the table, you can't not be happy. So it's like 5.15 right now. Uh, 5.30, we're gonna get the service going. Uh, everyone just come back from their break at like around five o'clock. So now we're like setting up and getting ready for tasting. So we have a checklist over here, which we go through. I don't necessarily have to taste every single thing on the list, but I will put my eyes on every single thing on the list just to check and just to make sure we are ready for service. This is the combo cured fluke. Very good. Candied pistachios for our entree salad again. And I like to taste things separately because uh, once they're together, you might miss a component. Pretty good, check, check. It's a truffle puree, I need to just test. That's the last thing for uh, for this station to check. Mm. Good. Hey, Hotline, let's get, let's get your things uh, sorted out over there, please. All right, Brandon. Hey, it's too salty, brother. I'm sorry, it's too salty. We're gonna make it again. Well, look, it's like 5.45 now, so we started at 5.15. It's already been half an hour, I'm still tasting, you know. Yeah, it needs like more, more? Okay. of like the sherry vinegar too. And like okay. more like more orange juice in it too, please. Yeah, sure. It's just not sweet enough. They have everything ready to go, you know. So now we're gonna go over there and start expediting for the service. Tastings, I think, I think it's the biggest thing. You can't go assuming you have everything right. You know, you gotta, you gotta make sure, you know. You saw how much time we spent all day and we still have some mistakes. And I think that's the last chance to get your mistakes right. Four and three top. That's a go time, sir. So it's around 6.30, service has started. Starting to, starting to move and shake a little bit. Hotline, we fire on all the entrees on 22, 23, 12. So the seafood course, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's a bouillie base, essentially. It's a, it's a seafood bisque, but the sauce is this, is this rich, umami, spicy, a little bit of acid, this balanced broth that I think really, really comes together. Or in two top. Rashid fire two salads, two ribeye salads, finish the sandwiches, and fire two more duck salads, please. You know, this restaurant is for our generation of diners. Like, I'm 42, I'm the demographic of diner. I grew up in the 90s, I listened to Wu-Tang, I did graffiti, I'm like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a different diner than the diners of 20 years ago. Uh, this is not, no. I'm not the chefs that I've worked for. I have different experiences, I come from different places. And for me, like, I, I'd love to figure out what fine dining in New York feels like for the next 10 years. And for me, it feels a little more casual. 
You know, like the linens are off the table. It feels like, I think, less stuffy. Service is still bumping and grooving. It's been a long day. Chef working overtime, bro. Clearly. It was here nine o'clock in the morning, bro. Breaking down that. <laughs> My goal is that the team that works with me eventually, they go on to do amazing things because the team is the most important part of this equation. Like you can't in in inspire with fear. I want to inspire by having these guys understand that this is an important thing that we do. Guests come here, they spend a lot of money. They come and enjoy our restaurant. We need to like respect that and take pride. Like take pride in your skill set.